Quiet, please. Quiet, please. Let me alone. What do you want three dollars for? The milkman. You had some money last night. Well, I got eighty cents. Thanks. Uh, listen, Ruthie, give me an idea for a character. I haven't got any ideas for characters. Haven't you really got three dollars? He's been here twice. Give him a check. What I want's a character for this script. The only one I can think of now is the milkman. You get to work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get to work. Sure, sure. If I get a character, I'll get to work. That's all I need, then I'll get a story all right. I think. Come on, character. Come on, character. Eh, now what you want. I said I haven't got three dollars. Oh, come on in, Ruth. What are you... What's the matter with you? Come on in, I... Ruth! Didn't you knock at this door? Are you crazy? Well, I thought I heard somebody. Yes, All right, all right. Oh, God, and I must be going. No, I didn't write that. How did that get on that paper? Bring me to life. I didn't write that. I did. Ruth! Ruthie! Hey, Ruthie! What's the matter? Ruthie, come here. Come here, quick. What's the matter with you? Come here. Look at my typewriter. Well, what about it? Well, look, look what's on the paper. Bring me to life. What's strange about that? Well, I didn't write it. What? Are you... Look, look. See what it's doing? Underlining those words. How are you doing that? Oh, God, I tell you, look, I said I didn't write it, and the typewriter just said, no, I did. Well, who is it? I don't. C H A R A C T E R, character. Now, look, this is 
is a gag of some kind. How are you doing? I tell you, it isn't a gag. That that typewriter's haunted. This is impossible now, I tell you. It is, huh? Well, look at it. Bring me to life. You see? All right, smart guy. It's a great trick. How do you do it? Ruth, I swear to... I swear I'm not doing it. You are, too. Look, now, wait. Wait a minute. I'll go way over here, and you'll see. Now, it'll write. It'll write. Watch now. I knew it was a gag. Listen, I've got housework to do. Now, you go on and get that script written. Oh, go on, Ruth. I, I have to think up a character first. There it goes again. Me, 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 me. All right, there's your character. Write about him. Do you really suppose that... Now, look, darling. I've been married to a writer long enough to believe almost anything. I don't know how this is done, but it's worth trying, isn't it? Well, I don't like to mucky with things oh, like that. Oh, don't be silly. Well, it's... Wait a minute. It's one thing to write about supernatural things. It's... Well, it's another to experience them. Huh. You've always been wishing you had a typewriter that would do your scripts for you. Now you got it. Go ahead. Well, yes, but... Uh, well, how do I know who this is? Who? Well, this character or whatever he is. Well, you decide. You bring him to life. Go ahead. Well, who should he be? Well, a pirate. Uh, I don't know anything about pirates. It says, I do. Go ahead. I don't like it. Go ahead. Unless this is a gag. It's no gag. Right. Well. It was a dark and stormy night. What's that? Sounds like thunder. My uh, gosh, does this thing control the weather, too? Go on. Write some more. This is getting interesting. Well, I... All right. <laughs> Nothing's happening. What did you write? Here. Read it. The pirate ship scudded through the roaring waves, all her sails straining under the howling wind. Do you smell anything? Smell? Yeah, I sure do. It smells like the ocean. Go on. Read some more, Ruth. I I think I know how this works now. Well, what do you mean? I... I think you have to read it to make it happen. Well, you read it then. Uh, no, you. I, I don't want to read it. I'm scared. I don't like it either. Look, the typewriter. It says, read it. Well? Well, uh, Captain Jabez Thorne... Scourge of the Spanish Main. Scourge of the Spanish Main slowly climbed the steps of the companionway. Uh, companionway? There's, there's somebody coming up the stairs. You know there aren't any stairs in this house. Oh, read some more. And flung open the door. Oh! He gazed on the wild scene for a second and drew his cutlass. What? What's that? My Swedish crystal vase! It, it fell down. He knocked it off with that, that cutlass or whatever it is. That vase cost $42. Well, I couldn't help it, honey. You do something about it. Oh, my beautiful vase. And there isn't another one like it in the world. Well, what can I do? For God's sake, honey, I can't help. Wait a minute. Wait. He 
he returned the cutlass to its scabbard. You see? That doesn't bring back my vein. Well, listen. He turned to the beautiful girl at his side. Hey, don't read that. And put out his arm. Oh, what? hands! What? What's the matter? Hands! Great big hands! Oh. Ruth, what's happening? Ruth! Somebody kissed me with, with whiskers! Oh, you, you pirate, you! I'll fix you! Ruth, no, no! I'll fix you! Ruth, stop! I'll stop him! There's your pirate! Oh, Ruth. Well, my friends, that all happened a week ago. Sure, it really happened. No, I haven't got any explanation for it. All I know is that that stuff appeared on my typewriter, and all the other things happened just the way you've heard them. And Ruth made the pirate disappear when she tore up the sheet of paper. All I know is it gave me a good idea for a story about a pirate, and I wrote it. People thought it was swell. And here it is deadline time again, and me without an idea again, and any minute that Hank Viscardi will be on that phone again asking for my script. You see? I'm getting psychic. So, okay. Hello, Hank. How did you know it was me? I always know when it's script day. I've only got about three pages to go, Hank. When do I get it? Tomorrow morning for sure. Okay. See that you do. Okay, Hank. You'll get it. <laughs> You'll get it. Here we go again. Here we go again. Uh, what do I write about this time? Oh, no. No, not about pirates again. <laughs> now, let me think. No, that's not for me. I, I don't like love stories. Mm-mm. No, no. People don't want war stories. Uh, how about a whodunit? Uh, a crime story, a, a murderer, a detective, spies, maybe. Calling all cars. <laughs> yeah, maybe I could do that. Uh, awful lot of whodunits on the networks, though. Oh, well. One more won't hurt them. Let's go. Uh, no, for a character. Character. I wonder. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Ruth. Ruthie. Sure, she's asleep. After the way she murdered my pirate. <laughs> you know this could turn out to be a great racket. Have your characters write your stories for them. <laughs> the only thing is, you have to be careful what I put down on paper. Don't want to find myself getting choked to death by somebody I brought to life. Hey, hey, what am I saying? Well, let's see what happens. Page one. You know, you don't have to believe this, friends. <laughs> I'm not so sure I believe it either, even though I've been mixed up with supernatural stories for so long, I guess I'm a sucker for them. Maybe all that didn't happen. Maybe Ruthie and I dreamed it. The only thing is, two people don't usually dream the same dream at the same time, you know. <laughs> and that Swedish crystal vase of hers is sure busted. You know, I didn't do it. Okay, hypnotism, maybe. Okay, hypnotism or something. And I'm going to try it again. Sure, just for laughs. But we'll see who will do the laughing, huh? Me or you? 
<laughs> How's your imagination? Mine's all right, thank you. So shut up a minute while I try this. Huh? Just keep quiet and let's see what happens, okay? Hey, hey character. Character. Come on, character. Come on, character. What? No, I did that. It wasn't the character. I just wrote, are you there? Let me see if he answers. Come on, character. I need a story. You helped me the other day, character. Help me now. Come on. Come to life. Character, you hear me? Come on, pal. I need help. Don't be mad at me. Pilot? Romantic guy. And a soldier. Jump. So I can't pull a character out of the air like that. Okay. So go on and laugh. I'm sorry. <laughs> and if you were sitting around waiting in the country at this time of night, all alone, your wife's sound asleep, and this is the only light in the house, and you've got to write a supernatural story before morning. Well, try it sometime, friend. Well, just keep quiet and let me try to work, huh? you got nothing to do but listen to the radio. How'd you like to have to write those things you listen to, huh? In the middle of the night. All alone by yourself. Okay. Quiet, please. too much alliteration? Weird wail of wind, whispering willows. I kind of like it. In the whispering willows to keep me somber company. That's okay, huh? Maybe I'll get a story yet. Let's keep quiet. I sure wish that character would give me a hand, though. Now, what could happen to a guy sitting here like I am? a ghost? Nah, nah, no ghost chains clanking and stuff, corny sound effects. No, no. A burger. Well, burger might be good. Uh, I wouldn't know what to do about a burger, though. We haven't got anything worth stealing around here. Besides, burgers are kind of corny, too, aren't they? You know, uh, you always think of a fat guy in a mask with an old-fashioned dark lantern and a bag over his shoulder. Uh, like those fellas, uh, John Codger. Uh, what's the name of the fellow that does it? Larry Reynolds? Uh, the big fat guy and a little old one. <laughs> now, burglars are funny. Burglars are out. Well, what the... Who'd come sneaking into your house in the middle of the night? Let me see. Let's see. Hey, uh... What about an escaped convict? An escaped convict? That'd be all right, wouldn't it? Uh -huh. You can do a lot of things with an escaped convict. Guy's wife asleep. You know, a desperate character. I could have left the door unlocked. He could have sneaked in. I never know it. He could be looking over my shoulder right now. Hey, stop that! Scare myself to death. Hey, this would be all right. This will be all right. He, uh... Let's see. He could have sneaked into Ruthie's room. Oh, did I wake you, Ruthie? Oh, I'm sorry. Talking to myself. <coughs> Ruth! Ruth! <coughs> What's the matter, darling? Where's the light? Never mind the light, mister. <coughs> and you shut up right now. <coughs> I said shut up. Quiet now. Stop it. Stop it. And I won't hurt you. Now stop. 
stop. You you hurt my husband. He'll be all right now. Just keep quiet a minute. Oh, who are you? Ma'am, I just crashed out of the big house, as they say in the movies. You... I am you... an escaped convict, oh. ma'am. And for your information, I am a pretty desperate escaped convict. Where's your husband keep his clothes? What? I'm still wearing the clothes the state thoughtfully oh. provides for convicted murderers, ma'am, and they're rather conspicuous. I need a change. Which is his closet? You, you killed him? No, ma'am, I didn't kill him, but I may do that yet if I don't get a little cooperation out of you. Oh, let me out. No, you just sit there and tell me where to find his other suit. Where's the light? Hmm. You're very pretty. Let me go to my husband. No, darling. No, I got other plans for you. Is uh, this his closet? Uh, oh, yeah. Nice little suit. Yeah, I, I like this one. Yeah. Uh, a little on the large side for me, but you can shut your eyes while I change. Uh, I'll need a shirt, too. What are you going to do? Well, I'll tell you. First, I'm going to get into this nice, new, oversized suit of clothes. Oh, let me see if he's all right. Sorry. Hmm, nice shirt. Sorry, no, I don't think he's dead. And uh, even if he is, he can't hang me more than once, you know. Please, please. Be still. Oh. I said be still. Listen, ma'am, don't be misled because I'm treating you nicely. I am really a very rough person. You might have read about me in the papers. Oh, please, won't you? No. No. Shut up or I'll have to shut you up. What are you... As soon as I get these clothes adjusted, I'm going to leave here, ma'am. Well, then can I... And I'm going to take you with me. No. You see, they're out after me already, and they want me pretty badly. They have rifles and shotguns, ma'am, and... They won't hesitate to use them. That is, unless there's a lady present. You see? Now, now a necktie. You're not... Shh, please, please. Hmm. Nice tie, this. Very nice. Uh, you see, if I might be so crude, I intend to take you along for a kind of shield, man. Oh. The boys won't shoot you, understand, if there's a possibility of putting a bullet through you. So I suggest you get up and get a coat or something. It's getting quite a lot cooler out. I said get up. I won't. Ma'am, you better. Oh, please let me see my husband. I told you would be all right. And if you're a good girl, you might get back to him one of these days. If you're not, uh, does your husband wear hats? If you're not, you might not. Come on. Get up. I won't. <laughs> I suppose it was Ruth screaming that brought me back through the darkness to a kind of semi-consciousness. The light was still on in their room. I could hear them talking. He's still out cold, man. I kept my eyes shut. I, I don't know why. I suppose I ought to have got up and helped Ruth. But I was still pretty groggy. I just lay there. I could hear them. Come on, come on, ma'am. I haven't got much time to wait. I'm not going. I, I got my eyes open just a little then, and I could see Ruth with her heavy coat thrown around her and... He had her by the hand, and he was pulling her toward the door. Come on, come on, come on. No, no. Come on. <clears throat> Seemed to be a long time before I could get up on one elbow. My head hurt. I wasn't sure what happened. Ruth was gone. Who was the man I saw dragging her away? I, I tried to think. Finally, the fog cleared away enough so I could figure out what to do. It seemed hours later that I got to my feet. I staggered out to the other room where I'd been working with my typewriter. I should do something I knew. But what should I do? My mind wouldn't work. I wanted to go after them, but something stopped me. Something wouldn't let me go. I didn't know what it was. Something was making a noise through the ringing in my ears. Was it? And at last I recognized the sound. It was my typewriter. I fell down as I staggered across to it. I crawled the rest of the way. Forced myself to look at the paper. My keys were tapping away. 
And slowly, painfully, I read the words. Bring me to life. Bring me to life. Bring who to life? Pirate. And the typewriter clacked away. Hurry. Hurry. Hurry, it said. Painfully, oh, so painfully. I got one hand on the keyboard. The letters were blurred. When I found them. The pirate comes in. Draws. Cutlass sees enemy goes to rescue through trench window pursues enemy enemy frightened wife knows rescue coming pirate raises cutlass to explain the dead man wearing my clothes in my garage, dead from the wicked slashing blows of a great sword, a, a cutlass. Hard to explain. That's impossible. You believe it? I believe it. Ruth believes it. And that's the whole story. Thanks, character. Good night, character. Listen to Bring Me to Life, a quiet, please story written and directed by Willis Cooper. The man who talked to you was Ernest Chappell. Dad Ruth was played by Helen Marcy. Walter Black was the murderer. The man on the telephone was Warren Bryan. The music was composed and played by Gene Brazo. And the character? And now for a word about next week's Quiet, Please. Here is our writer-director, Willis Cooper. Next week's story is called A Mile High and a Mile Deep. It's a story about the copper mines in the mountains above Butte, Montana, and the people who work there. And so, until next week at this time, I am quietly yours, Ernest Chappell. came to you from New York. This is the world's largest network, the Mutual Broadcasting System.